The name of this course is Linear Algebra. Where the linear comes from is fairly obvious. We started this course by studying systems of linear equations. But what exactly is algebra? Well, at its heart, Algebra is the study of mathematical structures. So an algebraist might look at two sets, the set of vectors in R3 and the set of two by two matrices. And she would say, well, in some ways, these objects are clearly very different. For example, all that section two stuff with inverses. You can talk about taking the inverse of a matrix. You can't talk about taking the inverse of a vector. But rather than focus on the ways that these two sets are different, let's ask what they have in common. For example, the set of two by two matrices. Here's a slide from section 2.1. We can add matrices and we can multiply matrices by scalars. And that addition and that scalar multiplication have these eight properties. So these are properties that the two by two matrices have. But if we go back to section 1.3, when we talked about vectors, we said that we can add vectors and multiply them by scalars. And that addition and scalar multiplication satisfies these properties. And this list of properties that vector addition and vector scalar multiplication satisfy is exactly the same as this list of properties that matrix addition and matrix scalar multiplication satisfy. So in some ways, square matrices and vectors are different, but they have a lot of things in common. Let's take this list of things that vectors and matrices have in common and turn it into a definition. Definition that V be a set of objects. We're going to call these objects vectors, but they are not necessarily the column vectors or the row vectors that we've seen before. They might be very different objects, numbers, functions, matrices, Suppose that on this set, we define a property called addition. Addition has to be closed. 
closed, or rather the set has to be closed under addition. And what that means is that if we have two vectors and add them up, the result of that sum is also a vector. It's also in V. Suppose we further have an operation called scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication is multiplication by a real number. And this set is closed under scalar multiplication. So that is to say, if A is any real number and V is a vector, then A times V is a vector. Now suppose further that this addition and this scalar multiplication have the following properties. Addition is commutative. Addition, vector addition, is associative. There is a vector that acts like zero under addition, in the sense that adding this vector doesn't change you. Every vector has an additive inverse. For any vector v, there's a negative v, such that v plus negative v is this zero vector. Adding two properties at once to this list, Multiplication distributes over addition. Scalar multiplication is associative. And scalar multiplication by the real number one does not change a vector. If we have all of this, this set, this addition, this scalar multiplication, and all of these properties, the set is called a vector space. And once again, these properties hopefully look familiar. They're the properties we saw vectors have in section 1.3. And they're also the properties we saw matrices have in section 2.1. Vectors and matrices are by no means the only classes of objects that are vector spaces. 
In the next video, we'll look at some more examples.